the next part that's attached to these parts. And you can find this little segment in any water, any glass of water, any bowl of soup that you might be served or be serving yourself at home. You can find it with this. We are drinking and eating this all day long. And maybe it wouldn't be so toxic and causing you things if we didn't have so much of it, but amount is a different issue. So first of all, we have to know what is causing what. The next item here is called onion, garlic, mustard oil. Okay. The next I the item after this will be a parasite, so let, let's separate our, our thinking right here, that last item is two together, uh, and I want to talk about onion, garlic, and mustard oil. That is attached to the cyanide. These were compounds discovered in the early part of the last century to be so vicious they could, they would eat a hole in your face where it was intended to be because it was a war instrument, uh, and nobody knew why it caused such ulceration because mutations and genes weren't discovered yet. But it was eating a hole in, in the flesh because it went straight to the DNA and ate it up. And there was no way of fixing that. There was no kind of wound healing that would be suitable. But garlic and onions have the same um, chemical composition similar composition as mustard oil. And you can look these up on the internet, look up mustard oil, and uh, notice that uh, what the composition is, and that, say for onion oil, there are about 300 different compounds that satisfy the chemistry that you need for this item that I'm talking about. I'm going to call it the cancer complex, but it's actually the disease complex. We'll go into that in just a bit. We should not be eating onions, garlic, and mustard. The fact that we find them out in the nature doesn't matter. We have taste sensations and things like that, maybe for our benefit, maybe they're kind of sharp, and, and so on, so that uh, children don't like them, and they wouldn't make a habit of eating them. But in, uh, in the course of our civilization, we have changed the taste of nearly everything so that it will sell in some way. However, in view of this, we should not be facilitating our disease-making process. There are plenty of uh, other things. And I'm going to talk about the next item, which might <coughs> just shock you to your shoelaces, as it did me. It's the common color blue. We use a blue dye discovered about 150 years ago called methylene blue. And we consider it so safe that you can stamp meat with it or any fruit. It, the stamp you see will be made of methylene blue. And that methylene blue, when it is free and you're drinking and eating it, goes to your DNA. If you look at your DNA with this device, you will see methylene blue hanging on to it in a diseased location. What's it, how did it get there? Anything that goes to your DNA and reacts with it causes mutations, and it's called an alkylating agent. Memorize that big term, because on the internet you'll find a lot there. There are different categories of alkylating agents, and methylene blue is one of them. Although you'd have to search hard for the methylene blue, this was only discovered through class in classical research two years, a year and a half ago. And I, 
haven't seen further research on it. I don't know why. But you can imagine that if the public knew that that was an underlying cause of our new diseases, there could be some kind of reaction from the public. So they would want to, you know, they would want to protect commerce in such a way that, um, well, I don't know just in what way. If I know something is an alkylating agent, similar to, um, similar to all the carcinogens that are listed in Prop 65 here, those are alkylating agents, and our most deadly toxins are alkylating agents. Things that go to your DNA are alkylating agents, including, um, including the ferrocyanides, the cyanides, and the mustard oils. There are different categories of them. What the methylene blue does, it goes to your DNA and combines with it after it has already dyed something. And what that something is, well, what do we use methylene blue for? To dye things, to dye organic matter, to dye meat. And what is loose meat in our bodies? It's a parasite. It dyes the parasite and takes it right over to the DNA where it combines with your DNA as an alkylating agent. It won't care which parasite it is. It will be whatever is available. So, I have, so the next item, put in a methylene blue here, just draw a circle and write in MEB for methylene blue because I did not have enough data at this time. You can imagine I wanted to be very, very certain of this in every person with a disease. And that goes next here. And then after that comes the parasite. The, in this, for cancer, the parasite is this particular fluke. In other diseases, it's a different parasite. And that is the cause of our new diseases and our increase in diseases. We have an increase in parasitism, a big increase. And it is thought that it is due to, well, I won't say it is thought. Uh, my theory is radioactivity. I can see the connection between increased radioactivity and increased parasitism. Wherever a person has considerable exposure to radioactivity, you have increased parasitism. Now, where could we be getting increased radioactivity? That is where other scientists have already put a lot of their attention. And their theory is left over from World War II, uh, uh, left over from war usage. There is that much radioactivity left in the atmosphere and in the earth and, and in, in everything where it has gotten spread to as a result. So there's cesium-137 and cobalt-60 and, and so on and so forth. And those are the most uh, prominent ones, but you can certainly find books on this on the internet. Now, there's no use jumping up and down and trying to explain uh, what should have been done or could have been done. What's a lot easier in society is to just downplay it and say it doesn't matter very much that there's uranium in the water now and there wasn't 20 years ago. Um, and justifications will be found. But this device finds that the uranium in our water and the other radioactivity in our water could easily be kept out. 
it is added. It's not in the original water. The water as it comes from our uh, water sources does not have the uranium that you see listed on your, uh, on your um, annual water report. Keep that water report. Read every detail on it. Notice that all the radioactive items on it are said to be coming from natural rock formations. And although they do come from such places, that's not where the bulk of it comes from in your water. It comes from the disinfection process of your water. All water has to be disinfected. There is no way that civilized cities can get away from disinfecting the water. But how it is done has not received the attention that it needs. We have very good radioactivity labs that can detect much better than a chemistry lab. So I think that they are ready, willing, able to do this kind of testing and it's not even terribly expensive. Get started testing your water. I don't know any place you could get the cyanide tested or the other things I say, but radioactivity you could get tested. And you will see on their list what they can test, gross alpha, gross beta, gross gamma. So that would give you three tests and I think it would be under $100 for uh, a sample of your water. And so it turns out that about half of the water in the U.S. has a great deal of radioactivity in it, including also the cyanide and including the garlic oil and including the polonium and cerium. The other half of the water that you're getting, mind you, it looks just the same as the other water. You can't tell by looking or tasting. I am working on some simple tests, but I've been working for 10 years and haven't got it yet. So <laughs> I, I think that sending water into a, a radioactivity lab is a good starting point. And we need to get interested in that. And I'd like to show you a device that you could use not to test your water, though. You could use this to test some of your food and some of the other things that you buy. I'll talk about that 